to episode 2 of the Ask Charles Show. It's so great to have you guys back to share some information about nutrition, nutrition tech and you know, kind of what we spoke about last time, just progressing on from that. Today we've got a few questions from, from people around the country and uh, yeah, we're just going to answer, answer them and see if anything else comes up for, for the next show. So the first question is from John. He wants to know why, this is an interesting one, and I think a lot of people will find it funny, but it's also something that uh, a lot of people want to know, is why does my wee, or my urine, smell after I've eaten asparagus? Thanks John, thanks for that awesome question. The reason why is because, scientists speculate, is because of a compound known as asparagusic acid. So when you ingest asparagus, then your body breaks it down um, and then this compound is broken down further into sulfur containing uh, compounds and then that obviously makes the, the urine smell a specific way. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of uh, you know, research into it and people are still speculating but that's kind of the main theory is because of this asparagusic compound uh, acid broken down further into sulfur containing compounds and then your body releases the smell. So there we go John, you have it now, now you can tell all the people around the water cooler exactly why this happens. So secondly we move on to another question, uh, let me just get it out here. This is from Stacy in Mschlanga, she wants to know what is BMI, or she says a whole lot of things, but basically the, the summary is what is BMI? So BMI is Body Mass Index. It's a screening tool that health professionals use to try and determine uh, you know, what risk someone faces at that point in time. So your Body Mass Index is not a diagnostic tool, it is a risk screening tool. And usually it's a, it's a very inexpensive tool because your BMI is calculated with your height and your weight. So what will happen is someone will take your weight and then they divide it by your height squared. That gives you a figure. And then based on that figure, the, the health professional or even you can determine what your risk is and where you are categorized. So with BMI, Underweight would be considered anything if the figure is less than 18.5. Normal weight would be considered anything from 18.5 to 24.925. Um, overweight would be considered from 25 to 30. And then over 30, you would be considered obese. So again, it's one tool of many. Uh, so it's something that people, we use as an inexpensive tool to, to measure, especially with large groups, you can get quite a good indication of what's going on. But you, know, you need to just, just make sure that it is one tool and um, if you can, you can use lots of tools and put them together and give you a better picture. But BMI is a, is a nice tool to use and you can see, ideally you want your BMI to be between kind of 20 and 25. That's the goal we aim for. And uh, if you are in a medical aid with all these, you know, different uh, tests that you have to do, that's kind of one of the, the tests that they do to give you your, your points and your, you know, your money back and all that kind of thing. Sure, so the last question that I've got here today, so I think that we'll just leave it at three, three for today, is what supplements should I use and should I be using supplements? Okay, so very broad question and something that I'm very interested about um, and supplementation is one of the fields that I have done a lot of um, you know, extra learning and uh, a speciality of mine so it's a good question to ask uh, what supplement should you use it, it depends but in most cases you don't need to use a supplement a supplement is exactly as the name implies it supplements the diet so your diet should be good and then you can start looking at supplementation. So I did a thesis on supplementation um, on the, you know, the average person and our findings were very interesting. We found that the more uh, educated a person was, the more affluent a person was and the more um, knowledge they had and the better they ate, the more supplements they actually used. So which is kind of a crazy thing, you know. So, the healthier you are, the more supplements you are using. So it's an interesting uh, game, the, the, the supplement market. And um, 
within the supplement market, there is a lot of money to be made. So the guys in there are doing some really good marketing and they're trying to get you to buy more and more and more. And the assumption is that a supplement can override a bad diet. So that cannot happen. If your diet's bad, you can't take a whole lot of stuff and make your diet good because it just will never ever work and you'll just keep on you know, getting unhealthy or putting on extra weight if you start adding a whole lot of things. A supplement is something to supplement your diet. So what most people do is they take a multivitamin. Um, you know, again, if your diet isn't good and you are you know, struggling to get in your fruits and vegetables, it's not a bad idea to take a multivitamin. But I mean, it's not necessary. Rather, you know, try and make your diet better and exercise and get your whole lifestyle better than just start taking supplements because you know like one thing leads to the next. Another supplement that I'm sure a lot of you are thinking about and a lot of you are using is protein supplements. Probably the biggest uh, niche within the bigger supplement market and you know they've really targeted that, that market well. So do you really need to take more protein? You know for the average person, no. You do not need to take extra protein if you're eating a protein in your diet. So, you know, generally the normal person, if you're not like an athlete or anything like that, the normal person needs between 0.8 grams per kilogram of their body weight to 1.2 grams per kilogram of their body weight. So if your diet, you are eating chicken and beef and eggs, consuming dairy, yogurt, all those kinds of things, you're probably meeting your, your requirements. So one thing that does happen is people think they need to take massive amounts of protein to increase their muscle mass if they are gymming. Again, it's not the case. Uh, you need to make sure your diet's good and then uh, make sure you are getting enough protein so your protein requirements can increase, but they aren't massive like what we see with most people. So a lot of people are taking three, four grams per kilogram of protein and that is completely um, wasted because you're either just gonna put on weight or you know you just really you don't need that amount so uh, I would say that getting the right amount of protein in and your timing uh, you know with your diet it is more important than taking in massive amounts of, of protein so the big fear is if I don't take lots of protein my muscles are going to shrink and I'm going to shrivel up and then I won't be able to get the gains the gains that's a big word that the guys use uh, in the marketing industry, it's, it's, it's in the supplement industry, it's, it's not going to happen. As long as you are you're eating enough protein throughout the day, uh, you don't have to worry about supplementing a massive amount of protein on top of that. There are a few other supplements that I just want to touch on is Omega-3 supplementation, which uh, you know a lot of people are taking and it's, it is one of the better ones to do. Just make sure that you're using um, a supplement that has uh, DHA and EPA in it in the correct amounts. Uh, that's the big thing again, there are a lot of supplements out there that aren't using a high quality, um, you know, aren't a high quality omega-3 supplement. So again, you're not reaching your requirements. And the, the, the goal is to rather eat fatty fish if you can, but if you're not eating fatty fish because obviously there's an expense and it's difficult to cook fish and a lot of people don't like eating fish, then you can look at taking an omega-3 supplement. Vitamin D um, is also a, a big one these days because a lot of people don't get into the sun anymore so you need to get into the sun for 20 minutes a day to synthesize vitamin D. You do, you do create it in your body if you get into the sun but if you're not doing that, if you're working long hours and uh, you're not getting into the sun or you know doing what you need to do, a vitamin D supplement can assist and vitamin D helps upregulate your calcium intake so you know they go hand in hand with, with bone health. And lastly, we're just going to chat about creatine. Creatine is a energy production supplement. So you store phosphates in your body and that helps you to, to, to get energy for short duration uh, explosive exercises. And you want to increase your power output or during your exercise sessions, creatine has been shown to be effective. Um, you'll see a lot of guys that are you know, trying to bulk up or, or, or girls trying to bulk up or for sports performance using creatine. Um, and uh, you know it's one of the, the supplements that has been shown to work. It doesn't work for everyone, but it has been shown to be effective um, as a supplement, as a sports supplement. So creatine is there is quite a lot of information out about it, but uh, you know just just be sure that you are reading up and, and and you know tracking if it's working for you if you are going to use it. So just in summary, supplements are not needed. 
They are a supplement to your diet. You can't take supplements to negate a bad diet. It doesn't work. You need to eat well and then you can start adding things on top of that. Watch out for a spot supplementation where you're taking a whole lot of individual micronutrients and, and vitamins. And then there are a few things that you can look at. Protein, probably not necessary for the average person. A vitamin D and omega-3, if you're not getting in, in enough fish, and you, or if vitamin D if you're a female and you're not getting into the sun, it might be something to consider. And creatine, again, if you are looking for sports performance, it can assist. But in general, make sure you educate yourself and um, look for, for supplements and read up. Don't just go into a pharmacy and just buy a whole lot of things because it can get expensive. You could rather get an extra gym contract or get a personal trainer or go see a dietitian or a nutritionist and then spend that money on food um, rather than spending it on supplements and then do it one month, you don't do it the next month. It can be very costly. So cool, thanks for watching today on the Ask Charles Show. It's been amazing having you guys. If you have any questions, Please let us know below uh, in the comment section or tweet us or post, it on, or post your questions on Facebook. We're always happy to answer and the Ask Child show is our weekly show and uh, yeah, it's been great hanging out with you guys and we'll see you, see you next week.